Hello, my name is KK and this is the Recovering Perfectionist. And today we're going to talk about the two things that you need in order to have a healthy relationship. So I think there's a lot of ingredients for a healthy relationship, but I just want to go over two uh, specific characteristics and kind of break down the definitions a little bit. So the first one is respect. And the Merriam-Webster definition of respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Love is an intense feeling of deep affection. So if you just look at the definitions and nothing else, it sounds like respect has requirements and love does not. It's just a feeling. We also know there's another definition of love according to the Bible. And I'm not going to quote the whole thing because y'all already know I'm not going to quote Bible scripture. But it's something like, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love holds no records of wrong, so on and so forth. So the definition in the Bible, and also when we think about the definition of friend, um, and I think the definition of friend was like a deep fondness or affection for. So if you look at all of those combined together, it sounds like, love has a lower threshold in respect in some ways um, if you look at the just the Miriam Webster definition um, if you look at the Bible there's actions that are required as far as what the people that are supposed to be loving each other and what they're doing so in the Bible sense yes there's there are requirements for love because it needs patient and kind it holds the records of wrong how many people y'all know that you love claim love but you hold all kind of grudges against them yeah you can't you can't do that if you love somebody you hold a grudge and you don't love them and maybe you need to detach yourself in some form or fashion or you need to practice some forgiveness um yeah so um i bring this up because i want people to be able to recognize the difference between love and respect um and the definition that we see in you know the mayor webster versus what's in the bible and also keep in mind that this whole thing about not needing to be friends in order to be in a relationship is a farce. Um, because friend and love, they're basically side by side when it comes to definition. Because for a friend, you say that you have deep admiration and respect and um, fondness for them. And love is a feeling of deep affection. And then respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something at least by the ability to follow the achievement. So all three are connected. So the friendship needs to be um, at the base, at the foundation of a relationship. And you have the respect and the love all on top of that. And think about with uh, children, you love them and they didn't have to do anything to earn your love. Um, and you show them the love by being patient and kind with them. So you can see like how confusing it can be. Um, when we talk about the definition of love because it seems like it's used in different ways depending on who it is we're talking about. Um, as soon as that little baby is born and you look at them, you just fall in love um, immediately. You fall in love with them the first time you see them on ultrasound. So, and they didn't have to do anything. They didn't show it up. But in adult relationships, love should not just be given away for nothing. You need to respect, have respect first, and then love. Patience and kindness, and then you have the love. Not just, I feel something. It feels good. He looked good, so I feel good about it. And he treated me nice for two seconds. And No, it needs to be continuous, consistent, patience, and kindness and love. Y'all can have disagreements. Y'all can get into it. But even within the fight, are y'all respectful? Or are you going for the juggler and, you know, it's low blows and making little nice, nasty comments? Or are you being petty and bringing up stuff that happened 10 10 weeks ago and you held on to it and now you're bringing it up in the fight when you said it didn't bother you back then but now I do and yes people make mistakes but it's your choice to decide what you want to do when you learn about that mistake you can choose to forgive them and stay and hold on or you can choose to have a boundary a standard have expectations for what you want to have in a relationship and if all that is not met you can choose to walk away from it and then what about liking somebody I like him we go together you know whatever same thing you still need to have a respect first um i don't see how you can like somebody you don't respect yikes and why not let's go ahead and do the definition of like um and there's so many ways to use it to feel attraction toward or take pleasure in to 
to enjoy, to feel toward or regard. I feel like we're confused in love and respect. You like him, so you can smash. You love him, so you marry him. Um, like and love, according to Merriam-Webster, and I think according to most of the you know culture, society's definition, there's no requirements for it. Um, I think that's why we need to use the higher standard of what's in the Bible. So it's up to you, though. You can use the lower standard of there's no requirements for love. It's just the way how he made me feel, the way she made me feel. But I, I, I say, why not choose the higher standard of the two? It's almost like when you're doing estimations and you are you need to buy some balloons for a party. And you need a certain amount of balloons to make your little balloon arch. And you're like, hmm, well, I could be a cheapskate and only buy 100 balloons, but then my arch is not going to be complete. It, it might be complete, but I'm not sure. Or I could buy some extra balloons and my arch, I know I'm going to have enough for it and it's going to look cute. And I might have a few extras to like give away to the kids too. Which one are you going to pick? That's up to you. I know I'm going to be the type of person where I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to go a little extra mile. So I think it should be the same thing with love. Choose the higher standard. You want to choose the definition, culture, society, you know, culture's definition of love, or the biblical standard where you have these requirements for love. So when you are courting, dating, in a relationship with somebody, keep this in mind. What qualities, abilities, achievements did this person exhibit in order for you to respect and love them? Again, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to say it again. What qualities, abilities, achievements did he or she have to exhibit in order to earn your respect and love? Or they just showed up and they gave you the feels and now you saying you love them. No, you don't love that man. You don't love that woman. You lusting, child. You lusting. So keep in mind, you can love any and everything. But respect is available in limited quantity because there are requirements. Do you know your requirements in order to respect someone? Not your preferences. I'm going to say it again. Do you know your requirements in order for you to love and respect someone? Not your preferences. Meaning, your preferences, he's tall, he works whatever kind of job, he got a car, he got an apartment, or he got his own place, um, he don't have no kids, whatever. Those are preferences. What you might actually respect might come in a totally different package and that's all right but what's more important your preferences or your requirements let's go ahead and do a definition of requirements why not we already doing all this breaking down a word something essential to the existence or occurrence of something else so something essential to the existence or occurrence of something else there are requirements that folks have to meet to have a job but you ain't got no requirements for your relationship there are requirements to get into graduate school. There are requirements in order to, to qualify for a home loan to be able to purchase a home. Do you have any minimum requirements that will lead to you respecting and loving somebody? All of the requirements that most people list are superficial. Surface level. If you ask for superficial requirements of your partner, you will get superficial surface level results. There's not going to be anything beneath that pretty exterior if that's all you're asking for if all you're asking for is materialistic things I think you can get the whole package I think you can get somebody that's fine cute got a nice career and he is kind and gentle and patient da, 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 da. it just might take a little bit more time a little bit more digging to get to that person to find them they got to I believe it you should love and respect yourself besides your children everybody else needs to earn your respect even your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your, your sisters, your brothers, your auntie, your uncle. Nobody just get it off, off GP, okay? Off rip, off the muscle. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Um, they can't talk to you crazy, and then y'all can be key keying later unless that's y'all have hashed it out and talked about it, and you shared your, your feelings, and you communicated it to them, and you used your emotional intelligence skills that you picked up to be able to deal with whatever the situation was. But nobody just gets the love and respect just because they related to you or just because that's your friend and you've known them for 10, 20 years. Nope. Nope. And even sometimes once your kids reach adulthood, sometimes folks got to cut them off too if there's some type of toxicity there or whatever. That's a whole nother video. We're not, but what I see is that most of us, we just love folks. We just love the way they make us feel 
and the respect may or may not ever come. We just we love them in the sense of what culture and society says. We just got uh, feelings and affections and whatever we feel for them. So stop saying you love somebody because of the way they make you feel. Let's break down some reasons why you should love somebody. Um, are they spirit driven? Do they have emotional intelligence? Are they open minded? Are they purpose driven? Are they kind? Are they resilient? Do they have good communication skills? Family oriented? Are they financially responsible? They have their own standards and boundaries. Do they believe in self-improvement, reflection, and self-care? Are they consistent? Do they keep their word? Are they responsible? Are they encouraging, supportive? Can they call me out on my stuff in a respectful way? These are the kind of requirements, and it's just a short list of what you would say is the bare minimum as far as being able to say you respect and love someone. And sometimes, you know, the feels and all that stuff, that might come first before you can say, okay, I fully respect this person. But you need to check in with yourself and say, okay, yes, I got the feels for this person. I'm lusting. I got, um, I'm liking him and whatever. But you still need to give it time in order to say, okay, yes, I fully trust this person. And I love them. and I respect them. So there's nothing wrong with having the feeling. We just talked about that. Honor your feelings, but don't let the feelings alone make the choice. Logic and the feelings to make your choice. So I hope that this video was interesting and helpful. Um, please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.